what is batch normalization let's see normalization is typically used to bring our inputs to the same scale batch normalization for deep neural networks was introduced in this 2015 icml paper now let's see why we need batch normalization so during the training process what we are trying to do is we are trying to update the weights in the network so that the outputs y y i's make sense given the input x i's but when you are training the network when you change the weights in a layer as a part of the training the inputs to the subsequent layers also change and now if you see like we're trying to learn the weights of these subsequent layers at the same time we are changing the inputs to the subsequent layers as well and this leads to a slowdown in the learning process typically and also sometimes this changes the distribution of inputs in the subsequent layers and this is typically called the internal covariate shift and this could also be exacerbated by problems like vanishing gradient exploding gradient and so on depending on the activation function that we are using another aspect is the sensitivity to weight initialization so let's say that you initialized a particular weight very high for a particular connection now it might be that you know that corresponding activation might end up being very high because of your weight and again you know this could uh, cause uh, challenges during the learning process because of the way we initialize the weights Uh, it might lead to like you know slower convergence so again normalizing the uh, uh, batch normalization would also reduce the sensitivity to weight initialization and another aspect is that batch normalization acts as a regularizer to some extent so now let's see how we actually compute the batch norm so let's say that the inputs to a particular layer are d dimensional and you have like this x1 to xd so batch norm is computed across a dimension so you take that particular dimension across all training examples and then you actually subtract the mean and divide by the square root of the variance so in this case for batch norm we take all examples in the batch and take that particular dimension and normalize so here is the pseudo code from the paper for batch normalization first you are computing the mean and then you're computing the standard deviation and then uh, you are actually uh, doing this process of computing an xi hat by subtracting mean and dividing by square root of uh, variance plus there is a small epsilon here which is something like a smoothing constant now when you're actually doing this batch normalization you are actually changing the inputs as a result of the normalization itself right and does that always have the effect you want sometimes it may and sometimes it may not so to control the effect of this normalization we have these variables gamma and beta so the actual y is computed as uh, so the output of the normalization is further transformed by multiplying with a gamma and adding a beta right which is called the scale and the shift variable respectively and these variables are automatically learned during the back propagation process to see whether you know uh, how much uh, we want to give how much of normalization we want is automatically learned by tweaking these parameters during the back propagation process so if we look at how to use this in python here's a very simple example in keras where you're first loading the mnis dataset and uh, that's essentially what you're doing in this slide and then you are defining a small neural network with a convolutional layer followed by the batch normalization operation so it's pretty simple to call as we all know when we actually use it uh so when you are doing the batch normalization there are a bunch of parameters you can play with uh for instance you can actually have the mean initializer the variance initializer the beta initializer gamma initializer and so on and we also have like you know uh, you can give the epsilon value and you have like you know a bunch of different other parameters you can see the uh, documentation to understand these parameters better so we looked at what batch normalization is and we looked at why we need batch normalization 
and we looked at a very small code example to see how batch normalization is put to use. Thank you.